Hello, thank you for stopping by. I am so glad you're here. In this video, we are going to be doing a sewing room reorganization. We all go through the process of trying to figure out an optimal sewing setup as we progress along our individual sewing journeys. What that optimal sewing setup looks like is different for each of us, depending on what we sew, how often we sew, uh, what sort of furniture and equipment we have available, what sort of space we have available. My sewing journey started with just a machine on a kitchen table. And then I put sewing away for a while and didn't come back to it for almost a decade. So in 2019, I started sewing again and my setup this time was a little bit different. I didn't even have a full kitchen table available. So I ended up with just a fold out table and a machine that I would put on it uh, when I needed it. And I used the floor as my work table. So after that, I got my first vintage machine in a table and I uh, just had a little cart beside it and used the floor still as my cutting table. Eventually I just gave up entirely on the notion of having a sewing area that could be neatly folded away and I just started a full permanent setup. And I also got a fold out uh, cutting table, which I still use. About six months ago though, I moved into my current space and I was very, very lucky in that I was able to get a dedicated sewing space. So figuring out the best way to use this sewing space to my benefit is what this video is going to be about. The first thing I did was take a picture of the room in its full mess and analyze it to see what was going wrong and to think about what I could do to improve. And that's a really good first step, but the problem with it is that I had done that before and every new layout I came up with that I thought, this is it, this is gonna be the one, turned out not to be the one. So this time I decided to try something different and to ask other people. Uh, so I took the picture and I posted it onto a Facebook group called Sew Manly. And I got feedback from other sewists who might be more experienced than me, uh, you know, at different points of their sewing journey, and who could just look at it from a fresh perspective. Uh, let me go through some of the suggestions that I got from the Facebook group that I was not expecting and uh, I think will actually be very, very beneficial. The single biggest tip was to go vertical. People said, maximize vertical space, vertical storage, go vertical. Pegboards are a great use of wall space. Now, I'm not the sort of person who likes to add more storage. I usually decide to get rid of things rather than increase storage. That's just a personal preference. But uh, after sitting down and honestly thinking about it, which was the point of this exercise, I realized that there are some very, very helpful vertical solutions that I can think of. Number one being the pegboard. All those little bits and bobs that were getting strewn all over the sewing room because it was too inconvenient to put them back in their drawer, uh, those could go onto a pegboard uh, and that would really solve that problem. Uh, and it was not even something I had thought of. Another vertical storage solution that I realized maybe does apply to me came from thinking about work surfaces. Consolidate the objects on the corner desk if possible. Maybe store your sewing machines to free up space. So I was of course open to the idea of consolidating objects on the desk because that was a problem I had identified also. But storing my sewing machines is something I was very much opposed to because I like those vintage machines out and visible. Uh, you might notice that they're not really visible right now, but that's because I realized I could go vertical with the machines and add wall shelving to put them up off of my work surfaces and still have them visible. The next big suggestion was get rid of the couch. And I had to ask myself, is it a problem? Uh, I hadn't thought of it that way. I mean, first of all, it depends on your perspective. I'm coming to this room uh, from a smaller sewing space, and this is my first dedicated sewing room. So I'm thinking of all of the space as potential. So a lot of the external feedback I got seemed to be coming from the perspective of this being a limited space, and the couch was using a lot of my valuable floor space and not producing a lot of value for my sewing. It does get used fairly often. Uh, I like to sit there and read. My partner comes in here and reads sometimes. And it is also a fold-out bed, um, not that it gets used that much. Initially, I was not open at all to the idea of getting rid of it, and some people gave suggestions for maybe setting up a cutting board that could go over it and then fold away when I wasn't using the cutting table. And that has some merit to it, but I think I am coming around on thinking about getting rid of it and maybe downsizing to a smaller chair. Another suggestion was to get the ironing situation straightened out, which I identified as a problem myself. Someone suggested setting up an ironing station on top of a chest with storage. Um, and I think I'm going to implement that. Uh, this antique dresser in the back, uh, I think is going to be my ironing station. 
uh, once I can figure out how to get an ironing station on top of it without damaging it. So I think that's more than enough um, information to be going on with. Let's dig into the software that I used and start planning. This is called Room Sketcher and it is a free software download. It's a very basic program. So I have it right now in my previous layout. This is with the cutting board completely folded out. This is my sewing table here. This is my little antique dresser storage shed or storage unit. This is where I would put the ironing board. Got my little uh, desk here. I had the longer log coffin desk here and right under here is a set of Alex drawers that I couldn't really get to and here's my couch. And right down here is the little unit that half of the desk was sitting on. It's where I was keeping all my bits and bobs. Um, you can see how hard that would be to get to while I'm in the middle of a project and why I just started leaving everything out. And first of all, workflow suggestions. Um, to have a U-shaped setup with your sewing machine in the middle, ironing on one side and a, um, like the serger on another or like a work table close by as well. Uh, so I don't always use my serger, it's not always out. So what I'm going to do is sort of do a little bit of a riff on that U-shaped setup. First thing I'm going to do is uh, straighten out the desk to where it is one long position along the back wall. Then I'm going to take this second desk and uh, I turned it to a 36 inch height rather than a 30 inch height. So it's a more of a standing work table. So this becomes more of a workstation where I can do things like setting in sleeves. I get my standing height workstation here. I get my desk down here, uh, sort of more away from the sewing area and just sort of free and a little bit more of its own thing. So then I'm going to move the sewing table along this back wall. I turned my storage desk around and put it against the window. I leave the sewing table uh, flush with it on that side, move the work uh, desk right there. And so this is my beginning sort of setup here. So I can sew, iron, and workstation slash. Uh, if I need to use my serger, I will put it out there as well. Um, so it's not quite the U-shape setup that people have recommended, but it is pretty close. Uh, for my workstation or my work table, my big long one, I think it's just going to stay where it was because it fits very neatly there when it's folded up. And um, it's still not terribly hard to get to when it is uh, completely folded out. And I could just make sure I have everything I need out of the closet before I fold it out. So this is where the couch went. Um, this little desk here where, or um, drawers where everything was sitting is actually now right here. So this is the basic layout and I will show you how this actually looks um, in real life. Uh, and on top of this, I am going to add uh, more vertical storage solutions. So once I had a layout set that I was happy with, um, I went ahead and rearranged all of the furniture to match. And now I'm going to order the extra things that I have to bring in, uh, basically my vertical storage. So I started with this shelving unit. Uh, um, this is going to go directly behind my desk, uh, behind and above, I guess, my desk and my standing work table. So I might have to readjust these uh, shelves a little bit so they don't interfere with the work table, but uh, I'll figure that out when it uh, gets here. Then I got a pegboard. This is going to go behind the work table specifically. And I ordered these little connectors to attach the pegboard onto the work table so I don't have to screw it into the wall. And I wasn't sure if the supports for the shelving would interfere with the pegboard also. So I figured I would go ahead and do this so I could have the pegboard sitting in front of those shelf supports. So all of this is being delivered tomorrow on Friday. I will get it set up on Friday and probably into Saturday. And then I'll just go through and do a final organization of the room and then get the final tour set up. After a very long process that started when I realized that my sewing room, as it was, just wasn't working, I think I am in a space that I'm very happy with now. It started with me identifying the problems that needed to be corrected and then I asked for outside feedback on what other people thought the problems were and how I could correct them. Then I came up with a plan for how to fix things and get a more functional layout. Then I had to take care of the practical things like when I was actually gonna rearrange the room. When I, was I going to get the shelves delivered? Uh, how was I gonna install them? Things like that. But thankfully it is all done now and I can cast this entire process into the sea of my forgetfulness. If I ever do need to remember anything that I did here, I can just watch the video. So you can already see some of the shelving behind me, but uh, let's take a look at the room as a whole and see how it's functioning. I've got my desk right here where I do all of my computer work. I've got my workbench right back there where I do more detailed things. My sewing table is against the back wall. I'm still in the process of converting this dresser into an ironing station. 
but it's functioning that way already. I just want a little bit bigger of an ironing surface once I figure out how to do that. And the fold up work table is still in its place over in this corner that you can't really see. Beyond just changing the layout, the biggest change to this room is the addition of shelving so I could go vertical. Uh, let's take a look at that now. This is an Ikea Boaxel hanging shelf unit. These are 23 inch long shelves. The whole system is secured into the wall using drywall anchors. Each screw is rated for 10 pounds of weight, so that translates to 330 pounds of weight that the shelving unit can hold, but I am not doing anywhere near that. I've got about 100 pounds on it now, and I think that's where I'm going to stay. I just wanted to get a few decorative elements up off of my work surfaces, but still visible. And I'm very happy with it, and I don't want to push it too hard because it is hanging from drywall. You can also see that I got a pegboard. This is the IKEA Scottis pegboard. I got the attachments that hold it onto the tabletop rather than it needing to be secured onto the wall because the shelf supports for the IKEA shelving would have interfered with that. The pegboard attachments for the Scottis pegboard at IKEA are in short supply, so I wasn't able to get them delivered. And I thought I was going to be clever and just order some off of Amazon. But what I didn't realize is that not all pegboards are created the same and none of the attachments I got off of Amazon actually fit this pegboard, which is super annoying. So I went ahead and ordered some off of a like secondary retailer and I paid like uh, three times markup to get them, but they should be here next week. It's annoying, but what can you do? All of the Scottis pegboard attachments for Ikea are probably sitting in a container ship somewhere off the West Coast right now, uh, rather than in Schaumburg, Ikea, where I wanted them to be. This is a desk, kind of self-explanatory. This is a 55 inch long log Copton tabletop. These are Alex drawers on each side. Uh, got my laptop, got a little uh, light here. Got a secondary monitor, very basic setup, nothing too complicated. Let's talk about the chair I'm using. I got this off of Amazon. Uh, it was under 60 bucks, so very affordable for a desk chair. It's got nice firm support. So that's great for sitting for long periods of time. I use a lumbar roll on it, which helps my posture, which is even better when you're sitting for long periods of time. And it does not have arms on it, which is excellent for sewing, so the arms don't get in your way. And I use it to wheel it back and forth between my sewing station and my desk. This is my favorite new space. It is a counter height workstation. Once I get all of the pegboard accessories in, I will be able to keep uh, lots of bits and bobs hanging there. So that will be super helpful. I can also sit on the stool here and do work as needed. And it is right beside my sewing machine so I can stage things here uh, for before and after I sew it. Let's talk about this sewing table. I was looking for something like this for quite a while and they are quite expensive new with this uh, pneumatic airlift for the machine. I like this style because it allows me to do flatbed sewing, but I can switch out different vintage machines so I'm not always using the same machine. This one just has a little pin that you pull and you can then push it down and then lift it up. And this machine is my Kenmore 1914, I think from 1977. Uh, it's still all metal internal parts. Kenmore, I think was the last brand name to be doing that. The body of this machine is all metal as well. So you don't get any of the discoloration that you get with plastic. Uh, you can see this knob right here is plastic and it's had some yellow ink. And you can just easily switch this into the convertible free arm position or back into the flatbed position and put it back where it goes as a flatbed. This is an antique dresser and I actually found it discarded in the alleyway. Uh, the wood was in very rough shape when I found it. Uh, it was very gray, dried out. I just cleaned it down with some very mild soapy water and then wiped it off with just clean water a few times, let it dry out completely. And then I just polished it up with a mix of apple cider vinegar and a cheap olive oil. And I went through that a few times and this beautiful wood grain came out and it's doing great. Uh, then I replaced all of the hardware because that was missing. I have my fabric stash in this top drawer. And that is where I keep my fabric stash. It is not allowed to uh, expand beyond that, except there are a few large bundles of fabric that I do have in the closet instead of here. But I tried to keep my fabric contained to this drawer as much as possible. Uh, so it encourages me to use what I have before I buy more. Uh, the bottom drawer here is just sort of like interfacings and a couple of uh, ends of smaller fabric that I want to save for like maybe some sort of special projects. 
uh, and just a few random bits and bobs. The top drawers are just storage for extra patterns and books and things right now that don't have a permanent home. I'm gonna sort that out. One thing I have that I think is fairly interesting are these Women's Institute sewing books from 1912. I actually got these for free, basically. I was buying a set of uh, accessories for my Kenmore 1914 and these were just in with a lot. So I spent like 30 bucks on the accessories, which isn't already ridiculous because it was a full set of accessories for the machine. I've got seven of these Women's Institute uh, sewing instructional manuals from 1912. Um, they're really cool. Uh, not necessarily anything I, ne I need or want myself, but they definitely have value and I know somebody's going to need or want them. So I'm just sort of figuring out what to do with these. Possibly uh, I could use them as a giveaway on this channel once I get to like a certain subscriber count or something. I don't know. I don't have any goals for YouTube. So it's hard to give away when I accomplish a certain goal uh, if I don't have any goals. I am going to be using this dresser as an ironing station. Right now it's just got a temporary miniature ironing board sitting on top of it. I plan to get a piece of wood to put on top of it so that I can put an ironing mat on top of that. And when I iron, it won't damage the dresser top itself. Uh, still figuring that out, but that is my eventual goal with this as an ironing station. And I will probably fill, free up these drawers uh, in order to get ironing accessories stored in them. This sofa is where I sit and relax and contemplate my own mortality if I'm in the mood. Um, I like it a lot. It's a very comfy place to just relax. I think every sewing room needs a relaxation station. Uh, but it is very big and bulky and the nature of the setup of this room with these French doors makes it kind of awkward to have a sofa here. So like I said, I am considering switching this out for a chair, but for now I do sit here. I will sometimes do hand sewing here and I can watch and I can watch and I can watch. I will sometimes sit and do hand sewing here and you know, watch something on my computer. My favorite part about this sofa though is this throw that my mother crocheted for me. It is made with a mercerized cotton yarn instead of like the normal yarn. So it has sort of like the texture and weight of a quilt, which I very much like. It doesn't have the fuzziness of most like crocheted blankets. And I have issues with various textures and the fuzziness is one of the things that I just don't like. So like this being like dense and sort of smooth is a good texture for me. And I love the color and I just love everything about this. So that brings us to the work table. It is in its folded up state right now. I'm going to show you how I fold it out and uh, what it looks like. I do just got to make sure that I get anything out of the closet I need before I unfold it. So if I don't need the entire table, I can just fold up one half of it. And I still have a pretty big work surface. I actually end up using this setup quite a lot uh, just because it's not so intimidating. But when I am doing pattern cutting, I definitely need to fold the whole thing out. So let's do that. It takes up a lot of space when it's all folded out, but it gives a lot of work surface. This is just a Sullivan's folding table. Uh, I got it from joanne.com on one of their like sales where it was like 80 bucks, I think. And it has served me very well. I read lots of reviews of them saying they were very unsturdy or they sort of fell apart quickly. I haven't had that experience. I've been using this one for over a year. There were a couple of tricks to that though. First of all, I didn't screw it together too tightly when I was assembling it. And I think that is true for most flat pack furniture. You don't want to screw things too tightly because you will strip the holes and that will loosen them up. I also don't put too much weight on it. I never lean my body weight onto it. I don't stack heavy things on top of it. I try to be gentle with how I'm moving it around. So it's holding up really well. I would not say it's the most durable thing in the world, but uh, as long as you take a little bit of care with it, you're gonna get you know a couple to several years use out of it. You know, for $80 for a folding work table, that's not terrible. I do regret not getting uh, the style that has storage in this center part. So if I did it again, I would get one that has storage in the middle here. But for right now, until this table gives out on me, this is what I got and it's holding up pretty well. So this is now my pattern storage. In a previous life, this was a serger station. It has a little drop leaf that folds up. And then it was where I kept all my bits and bobs for sewing that have now moved to my desk drawers. 
So this is a piece of furniture by Adeptus. It is actually pretty well made, uh, it's solid wood. There were wheels on it that were not well made and I just took them off entirely. It has a drop leaf so it can function as like a desk or a, like a surging station. And it has done that for me before. It's just not what I need it for now. And I've just got all of my sewing patterns organized by type in the different drawers here. So um, this is basically just expensive patterns that I wanna be careful with. This is shirt patterns. Um, this is my knit pattern category. Woven outerwear. Costumes. Uh, pattern protectors, like non-acidic uh, pattern protectors. And then like miscellaneous junk. All right, taking a look back at the shelf, let's go through what I've got up here. This is a Singer 128 from the early 1920s. Uh, in perfect working condition. I've got the case for it as well. Uh, it has a knee bar on it. I think it's a pretty cool little machine, although I don't sew with it very much. Uh, this is a reproduction vintage Barbie because I plan on making a few little Barbie outfits just for fun. Uh, some Kenmore attachments, little random sculptures from a thrift store. This is a new home machine. I think this is from the 1940s. It takes a certain type of needle, which is hard to find. I do have a supply of about 15 of those needles. Uh, I did end up throwing away the foot pedal for this because it was in really bad condition. And silly me, I didn't keep the plug for it. So I need to get a new foot pedal to get that one working. Although I do think it takes the same sort of foot pedals that Singer Featherweights do. So I can get one, I just don't have one for it. This is a Japanese zigzag machine from the early 1960s. It was badged Kenmore, but it is not the normal Kenmore brand that you would have gotten in the US. I think this was made for the Canadian market. It doesn't have the proprietary US base and it doesn't really look like US Kenmore's and it doesn't have any um, model numbers like US Kenmore's did, but it's still just a really cool machine. And for now, this is just a filler picture that I wanted to put there because I didn't have anything else to put in that spot. And I didn't want to add much more weight to the shelves. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have found it interesting and maybe a little informative. If you have not already, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you've enjoyed the video, please like it. If any of you have sewing room organization tips, I'd be very interested to see them. So please comment them down below. I hope that you'll come back for my next video where I will be sewing a hoodie. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the future.